Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video, we will be using Ops Manager to deploy a MongoDB replica set. In my previous video, I showed you how to install Ops Manager and in this video, we will see how to use Ops Manager. Okay, so for those of you who have watched my previous video, I've got these machines, Ops Manager, where I've installed the Ops Manager. It's running fine and you can see the web UI here. And I've also got three Linux containers, Mongo 0, Mongo 1, and Mongo 2. So I'm going to be using these three containers to install a MongoDB replica set uh, in these ones. Okay, so what is required? So here, if I go, I'm in the production project. Okay, so build new deployment. Uh, these are all CentOS 7, by the way. So new replica set, and you will see a warning here. No servers detected. To deploy this cluster, place the instructions on how to add a server and install a MongoDB agent. Okay, so um, let's cancel this and go to the servers tab to see if we've got any servers because it's a brand new installation of Ops Manager. We haven't added any servers to this um, replica set, sorry, to this uh, Ops Manager project. If I go to the architecture here, so if you want to deploy a MongoDB replica set on individual machines, so there needs to be something that's running on these machines that can talk to Ops Manager. So that is the MongoDB automation agent. So you need to install the agent on all these machines and then Ops Manager will be able to send the commands to the agent and the agent will then configure the system uh, to be a replica set, okay? So the first thing is we need to install the MongoDB uh, agent, uh, the automation agent. So once we install the agent on all these machines, then we can see them, they will be managed by the Ops Manager and then you will be able to see the servers in this page here. Okay, so how do we add the servers? If I go back to process and follow the instructions, new replica set, no servers detected to deploy this cluster, please see the instructions, okay. So all my machines that I want to manage are CentOS 7, so I'm gonna go with this option, otherwise uh, choose the appropriate option, um, which one, rel 6, no, Suzy, Amazon 2 if you want, um, Yep, so let, let's go with that one, RHEL 7, uh, CentOS 7 or Amazon Linux. Or if you're using Amazon Linux 2, then choose that option. Okay, so the tool, Amazon Linux 2 RPM. Okay, let's go for that one. That's the default one. Click next, and basically these are the steps that we are going to follow. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to launch Tmux and i'm going to open three panes and i'm going to log into each of my alexi containers here okay okay and i'm also going to synchronize my pane so that if i just type in one command one prompt uh, then it will get replicated on all the other panes as well so that saves me some typing i'm going to provision this i'm going to follow this instructions on all the three mongodb machines at the same time Alexi launch uh, Mongo, sorry, Alexi exec. I'm logging into each of those machines. Alexi exec Mongo zero bash. Alexi exec Mongo one bash. Alexi exec Mongo two bash. Okay. Now paints synchronized. So now if I just type a command, you can see it gets typed everywhere. Now we can follow this instru sorry, instructions. Uh, the first thing is we are going to download the automation agent RPM and then we will install it. So copy that. And I think we also need sudo because we are using LXE containers, we are logged in as root user, but it will be easier if I just copy and paste. I don't have to edit it. So let me install sudo, although it's not necessary. Yum install sudo. Okay, so while it's doing that, we have downloaded, I think, no, we haven't downloaded. So we need to run the first command. Copy that and paste it. Cool, so if I do ls, we've got the automation agent RPM downloaded. So now we can install it. That's installing and what we now going to do is generate the key and update the automation agents configuration file. So key generated and that's the key and we are going to edit the automation agents configuration file on all the machines. And the three things that we are going to update in this file are the group ID, 
API key and the base URL. If you're following this in the production environment, make sure to generate individual API key for these individual machines, but I'm just showing you how to do it. So this is my, just my test environment. So I'm using the same API key for all the three machines. Okay, so the group ID is that one. Copy and paste it here after group ID. And then the MMS API key, which is uh, this one, copy and paste. And finally, MMS base URL, which is this one, copy and paste. Okay, so those are the three things we need. And then now we are going to uh, create the directory slash data, which will be our database directory. So it'll change ownership to MongoD. Okay, that's done. And finally, uh, we are going to start the automation service. Okay, so that started system CDL status MongoDB MMS automation agent. And it's running fine. Let's log out LXA list. Okay, so we don't need the terminal anymore. Close that and we can verify the agent. Okay, click cancel. And if we go to the servers tab, now we can see all these servers. Because we have installed the um, automation agent, um, it is contacting the ops manager. And now we are able to see all the servers that this ops manager manages. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is activate monitoring on all the uh, machines. I'm also going to activate backup. Activate backup. Activate backup. Activate backup, review and deploy. Confirm and deploy. Okay, so very soon it will change to green, all the monitoring agent and the backup agent, but we don't have to wait for that. Those are just monitoring and backup agent, but what we need is the automation agent, which is already running. You can see here MongoDB agent is actually running and the um, monitoring and backup demons are also running. So now we are good to deploy a replica set through Ops Manager on these machines. So new replica set, give it a name, whatever name you want, and then whatever version you want, I'm gonna stick with the latest version 4.2.2 and process name okay so why is it showing mongo-0 for everything that's because we haven't updated the member configuration so the first member is mongo-0 second member is mongo-1 third member is mongo-2 if you want to add additional uh, members to this replica set you can just go ahead and add um, a new server and then add this later Okay, so replica settings, advanced configuration. I'm just gonna leave everything default. If you want, you can have a play with it. And then click create replica set. Invalid configuration, required attribute, log path was not specified. Okay, I must be missing something. Cool, yeah, data directory and log file, that is mandatory. Slash data and the log file will be slash data mongodb.log. Okay, create the replica set, review on deploy, Confirm and deploy. Okay, so now it's going to provision us a replica so we can look at the status, what it's actually doing. It's empty at the moment. Let's wait. Nope, it's still not there. View status, yeah, cool. And you can also look at the individual details. So what it's doing now is it's downloading the MongoDB binaries and then it will start the process. Wait for all the members in the replica set uh, to come up and then it will initialize the replica set and so on okay so let's wait for that once it turns green uh we should be able to see some metrics uh, and we can manage everything from uh, the ops manager okay i'm gonna pause the video and come back when uh, the replica set has been provisioned all right so the replica set has been provisioned and if i click here you can see so that's the primary and that's the secondary those two are the secondary nodes and if you want to connect, you can look at the uh, how to connect to this replica set. In theory, you should be able to com um, connect to just one member of this replica set and it will find out what's the primary and it will uh, get you to the primary node. And uh, we can also look at the metrics. If I look at the metrics here, it shows the op counters. And if you want, you can add turn on any of these charts 
for example process cpu system cpu and it shows that for the primary node secondary node and secondary node um process cpu okay system cpu and disk space used that's disk space used so that's something that you can monitor uh, from this uh, ops manager web ui okay so that's deployments and now um, you can go ahead and uh, provision other deployments other replica sets or sharded clusters or just standalone mongodb instances and you should be able to see that from here monitoring agent backup agent automation agent everything is running fine and it also gives you some information about what's the server um, how much memory it has got how much cpu it has got and so on uh, everything is so showing like 16 gig because um, i haven't restricted my alexi containers for any specific amount of memory so it's using my host machines uh, memory which is 16 gig and it's they're all running centos 7 cool so that's how you use ops manager to provision um, a replica set the process is going to be quite simple quite similar for the other types uh, for uh, sharded cluster replica set standalone or you can also use an existing mongodb deployment if you want to bring your existing server into uh, ops manager you can just install the uh, uh, mms automation agent and you can then start monitoring uh, and managing using the ops manager okay um i think that's all i wanted to show you in this video thanks for your time watching please give it a try and if you've got any questions let me know i'll be happy to help and don't forget to subscribe to my channel i will see you all in my next video bye bye